Evening everybody. Can somebody just give me the thumbs up to say they can hear me. Cool, thank you. Thanks, buddy. Somebody keeps pressing the grumpy face. I don't get it. Ah, uh, that's because Rodri, um, as a fellow Welshman, I, I'm assuming um, you don't really want to see me. You want to see the flies, to be fair. Just give it a moment for uh, for a few others because I did say seven o'clock would be a starting point. Now, oh, evening, Rob. It's about as 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 good as you get of looking at me, Rodri. Um, I'm not the most photogenic person, I don't feel. But, uh, this is my alter ego. There's one thing I've discovered during these sessions um, over the weeks is that Talking to a very quiet room with nothing is something I can't, it's not great. As a, as a teacher, I'm usually being heckled by a load of uh, 15, 16 year olds. Um, so in the background, I've got um, I've got Led Zeppelin playing just just to keep away the sort of sort of the echoey silence in my own room. Yes, you can see my little bit of my tufty beard. There it is. Hi Eric. Um, yeah, this will be live. Uh, this will be recorded. It'll be on the um, on the, on the Facebook group page um, for you to review and have a look at. I'll tag it into the um, the Fly Club page. Um, so um, you know you can have a look. Um, and I'll do it. when I get around to it. I, I'm very behind on them. I'll do my um, my my ten minute videos of how to tie each individual pattern and my and the and the uh, step by step guides as well. Make sure you got a drink with you, folks. Right then, folks. So um, tonight, um, the plan is to sort of is to tie up some daddy long legs, detached body daddy long legs, so that you can see um, and have a go at trying something that you may never have thought that you'd even attempt. But even just to sort of see the steps and be able to ask some questions, um, and also the um, the second fly, um, uh, the second fly um, that I'm I'll hopefully get around to tying is one that. If I go fishing without it as a dry fly in my box, I just feel totally undergunned. And it's the um, it's the L care caddis with a few little twists that um, that Kieran and I um, uh, have, have developed over the last sort of uh, couple of years. 
but of course there's nothing new i've seen that lots of people do it uh but it's just something we came up with independently and, and it seems that everybody else had already been there um just um, a bit of a shout out while i'm at it um i, I realized that in all these weeks where i've been doing these um you know i've i've failed to mention um, um my good friend kieran who um who designed this fantastic logo this lost lake fly logo so um big shout out to him tonight because uh, he does all my design work and is uh, without it might be exceptionally lost um, with the things that things that we're doing um uh so um so we're going to start off um without much fanfare i'm going to start off with the um detached body um uh, daddy long legs and you'll notice that in the vice here i haven't got a hook at the moment i've got a needle um this is alfred my trusty sidekick um he does everything for me um, this needle um he's either used for resin or um he's used for poking and getting rid of uh, uh bits of hackle and all sorts of stuff but he's a very much a utility needle um and the needle that i'm using is just a, a standard sewing needle um it needs to be quite firm you don't want a really bendy one um you want it to to withstand you bit pulling down on it with the tying thread um and you don't want it too long um so this is about what two two centimeters in length here just sticking out you can see the other end just over by here okay um so um literally we're going to start off now when we're tying detached bodies um people often look at it and go well that's really complicated um it doesn't have to be complicated um and there's lots of things you can do to make it less complicated than, than lots of people make it the first thing is your choice of foam um, so I've got a little bit of foam here that I've cut. Now I've cut this from a piece of foam that looks like this. It goes better if I do it this side, isn't it? Piece of foam like this. Okay. Um, that I just picked up in Hobbycraft. It's this uh, this dark chocolatey brown, um, and I'm using a um, uh, um, a cutter which I bought, and I've mentioned these before um that i bought um that is a caddis body cutter but actually i find it really useful it's ubiquitous so i can use it for for lots of different things and i do, I, I cut it one end and then flipped it round and cut it the other end so i've got a really long strip now you could just use a pair of scissors um, but i found that actually i ended up then using a craft knife and i was measuring them out and and it just it just took way too long um so i've got this nice long piece it's nicely and it's tapered at the ends which is something which uh which which i quite want as well um so we're going to start off and all i'm going to do is i'm going to take some brown thread it's just uh my um trusty semperfly um waxed brown 12 or tying thread and i'm just gonna tie it on and catch it onto the needle and i'm just going to pull it down a bit and i'm going to leave this long thread i'm just going to tuck it back over here don't cut that off okay now that's going to form the starting point of our of our detached body um then i'm just going to take my foam and at this end one at one of the ends i'm just going to cut a little v shape got plenty there so don't don't worry too much if it's not perfect so i'm going to cut a little v shape like so now I'm going to use that to just stick the needle into the end of that so that it's just going to be held onto the needle like that. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to hold it there and I'm going to pinch it with my fingers like so. And... I'm just going to take a wrap, one, two, three wraps, and I formed a little bulbous end here. Now, normally we wouldn't want a little bulbous end, would we, lads? But in this case, see, the joke's come as well now. Um, but in this case, um, that's forming that little tapered end of, a of, the, of the abdomen and the body of, um, of, the, uh, of, of, the, of the fly. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the foam and I'm going to take my tag end and I'm going to raise it up and I'm going to take my bobbin just over just to the other side. And then I'm going to repeat the process 
a little bit further down. One, two, three. I'm not going to pull too tight. I don't want to pull too tight because otherwise I'll never get it back off. But you can start to see that we're developing this segmentation. So I'm going to lift up again and I'm going to place it over the top. Now, as I move down the body, I'm just going to make these slightly longer. One, two, three, because that would mimic the sort of segmentation size on the abdomen um, of either a mayfly or, in this case, the daddy long legs. And I tend to go for mine, and you can do as many as you like, but I tend to go for five segments. So I'm going to go for three. I'm going to make this one about the same size, two, three. There we go. And then over again and make this one slightly longer. One, two, three, four on that bottom one. And I've got five segments and I've got this end bit here that's going to um, be really useful for us in a little bit. Now I've got to that point and I can now hold it with my fingers. Just make sure it doesn't spin. And now I'm going to use my whip finish tool and I'm just going to put a whip finish at the end by here, three or four, and there we go. So we formed a body on a pin and I'm going to leave this for a bit later. Now, here comes the trusty bit. What I'm going to do is... I am going to pull it off, but you can see underneath, I don't know if you can see, I don't you can't see from there without me moving the camera, but you can just make out underneath here, you can see where all of the thread is. So I'm just going to take my fingers and I'm just going to pull, and it should just pull right off. And we'll be left with a detached body. Okay, and then I can just pull this little thread here and what it does, I don't know if you can see this, what it does is you pull it a bit tighter and it moves it and it curves it and you can close up a bit like uh, closing up a shoe underneath and that's the bottom part there and then we've got the main part of our body here. Now you can see where I cut in a V shape at the end here you can see that it's made that nice point there. It saves me having to mess around too much with a pair of scissors and coming in and, and just and just nipping it. I could nip it just a little bit, just a little bit more, just to give it a finer point there. Um, some tires singe it a little bit as well, which is fine. I've never really seen the need. Um, it doesn't make too much of a difference um, when you're trying to catch fish. Um, but we've got our detached body ready to go. And what I try and do is... Um, when I've got some spare time, I'll tie up quite a few of these in a row and then I store them um, in these little boxes. You can see in here I've got um, some um, uh, mayfly bodies that I made ready to go. You know, slightly different style on this one um, because what you can do as well is fold the foam and then place it on the end like that and you'll obviously put your tying thread on and then you can form it as a double body okay but that gives you less to play with at this end and some and quite often i, I want to use that bottom end of or that back end of the foam as an integral part of the body to help it sit in that surface film okay um so uh let me just have a look um so craig i cut the thread um I tend to cut the thread with uh, with a scalpel. Um, just le for me, it leaves a, ni a, a much finer cut, um, and it doesn't leave any long, unsightly tag ends. Um, it's important to keep it really sharp. It's just a uh, this is a Fiskars one that um, that I picked up in Hobbycraft. It's a nice little one. It just sits, um, actually, just sits on your finger like that. So you could just clip it. I use it for lots of stuff okay um so there we go that's the body so we tied that um, and then i can get rid of the needle alfred can go over there and then we're ready to start um developing the fly now at this point the rest of the fly 
dare I say, and you'll probably shout to me, the rest of the fly is quite straightforward. Um, and it's, and it, it just covers many of the similar techniques that we've looked at before. Um, I'm going to use for this one, I'm going to use a, uh, a Sprite hook, barbless dry, size 12. You can go down, um, I've, I've tied these down to a 16 or an 18 um, uh, because you can get very small daddy long legs compared to very big ones. And um, when fish are aggressively feeding, um, and uh, I don't know how many, if any of you managed to, uh, managed to pick up a copy of Colin McLeod's book, Muller on the Fly, um, he talks um, quite... Um, animatedly about competitive feeding between fish between the mullet it happens with all fish as well so when the what we find particularly at meon springs and other fisheries and, and sometimes on the river is when the when the daddy long legs are out um the fish are just chasing and just trying to grab hold of them before the next fish does so um so um size isn't necessarily um, um the issue it's getting the fly into the right position because they'll often hit it straight away as soon as it hits the uh, hits the surface. Um, so in terms of thickness of foam, um, Ian, um, I would say that is about two mils. Two, yeah, about two mil um, in terms of thickness. There, it's not massively thick. Um, it's just typical craft foam that you can pick up at fifty p a big sheet um, from from Hobbycraft. Um, there's multiple different types of foam that you can use. There's a uh, there's open cell foam, there's closed cell foam, there's plaster zone, there's all sorts of stuff. Um, I just quite like using this. Um, it 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 does the job um, and it's cheap. Okay, so um, I'm going to tie this on a size twelve hook to start us off today, just so that we've got a little bit more space, so you can see what's going on here, um, and. I'm not happy with that. Just got to reposition. There we go. Right. Okay. So, um, as with all patterns, um, technique is key. So, patterns come and go. Techniques will last you forever. So, keeping and maintaining and 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 just religiously keep it doing the same thing over and over and over again regardless of the pattern will result in better tying um, so i'm going to start off um, just a couple of mils in from the eye um, and i'm going to put a layer of thread i'm going to put a layer of thread but i'm not going to go all the way back to the end of the bend i'm going to go in line with the hook point here okay because I actually want, when I'm fishing this, and, we, and there's been a lot of chatter on the Facebook book page about how to fish flies. When I'm fishing this fly, um, I don't want any of the legs, the wings, the body and the material to get in the way of the actual hook point. Because they will hit this quick and they will hit it hard and they will spit it out twice as quickly. And I want that to actually take hold as soon as they've come up, taken it and turned um, rather than to give them an opportunity for for something, some part of the fly to actually get in the way, and uh, and and actually result in in a in a failed hookup. Um, so I'm just going to nip that bit off. We go there, and then we're going to come in with our detached body. Now, the detached body is going to sit round about there. So if I hold it, it's going to sit in there, and it could be as long or as short as you like. Okay. Um, I quite like to to take that fifth segment and just tie in my body in line with the hook point just at that point. So I'm going to put three turns in just to lock it and hold it. Just check that I'm happy with its position because at this point I can change stuff. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Got that bit that I can play with a little bit later on. Now this tag end piece, you kept this on there and long because this allows you to tie it in and trap everything down um, onto the hook shank. So just a couple of turns just to trap that in. Now that is not going to go anywhere. And then you can come in 
just push it against your scalpel blade off it goes and we're tied in and then you can then worry about just tightening it up there we go now I tend not to use nano silk and things like this for for these patterns because it will cut through the foam it's so strong um, that just a little bit of pressure and it will it's like a it's like um, a cheese wire it will just cut through it and you'll, you'll have to start all over again um, so um, we got to that point now that little section in here just between here and here you can leave it like that but Bit of a perfectionist so i'm just going to take a little bit of um my trout stalker with some of my favorite dubbing um, um can't buy it in the shops but you can you can contact andrew ellis through facebook and i'll try and put a link up for him um it's just some of the most amazing dubbing um you'd never want for anything else um and uh and this is this particular one um is um uh oh, there is is uh is is a scruffy buzzer so it's an olivey brown, but it fits perfectly for this pattern. You can change it, you can put whatever you like in, to be honest. But I'm just going to, I'm just literally going to dub a little bit on. Not a massive amount. Nice little tight little noodle here. And then I'm just going to just cover over that unsightly mess there. And then bring it just in front and just tidy it up. You can see that it's starting to look so much better already. A little bit more dubbing. You can see that this scruffy dubbing just it just adheres itself to the wax thread. It's pre-waxed. I haven't added any wax to it at all. A little bit of moisture and, and um, from my fingers as well. And then I'm just going to build up a little dam just behind it. And then we've got to got to this point here okay so don't forget guys in the um in the the comment section questions are great if anybody else wants to answer them as well that would be fantastic if i miss anything um um because i never actually see um uh, see absolutely everything until later on if i do miss something i will try and reply um during the course of the evening or first thing tomorrow morning when i first wake up um so we're at this point here you can see it's starting to look like a detached type fly you know we've got this body okay which uh which is going to form a great silhouette on the surface okay um so now we're going to put some legs in so the legs for this i'm going to use some knotted pheasant tail here um and um during the winter months i'm i can often be found watching tv on a sunday evening with a crochet hook and a, and, a, and, a, and a load of these feathers tying my own knots in this one is actually a bought in one this is Semperfly's um, uh, knotted pheasant tail. Um, and uh, like most Semperfly products, you can buy them from my website. Um, and uh, these are on there at the moment, although I haven't got many left in stock. Um, but sometimes it's easier just to pre-buy them. Um, but I will do a little video on showing you how to crochet hook, um, uh, hook, them, hook them. Because when you get going, it's really quick. Um, so for this, this pattern, um, I'm going to take... I'm going to take three of these. Okay, I'm going to take three of these. I'm going to pull them to a, to a right angle out from the uh, the the stem, and I'm just going to remove those, like so. So I've got all the knots together. In fact, these are double knotted. These ones. Oh, there you go. I'm going pulling out all the stops here. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I don't. You can have them quite long because Daddy Long Legs legs are splayed out all over the place. Um, but believe you me when you're fishing with this um the legs the wings anything sticking out takes a battering and often you can get um uh multiple um you can often get multiple um fish on one one fly so i know that we've kieran and i have fished with this pattern over the last few seasons um and um you know you can take 10 to 15 fish over the course of a couple of days just on the one particular fly it looks absolutely battered by the end of it but um but it's absolutely fantastic so i quite like them just to be a little bit longer than the abdomen so that we've got the knots if i put it this side so that we've got the knots just sort of halfway down towards the uh the bend of the hook just by here 
So um, I'll tie this side in first so that you can see. Um, it, it can get a bit fiddly. So two ways of doing it. Um, you can either do it the old school way, to place it on top and then bring your thread across. Or you can bring it under and just place your legs so that they're just trapped down. And then that gives you the ability just to reposition them wherever you'd like. So there we go. Just might make that a bit a bit higher up. And then I'm going to put a locking turn in and then a second locking turn. And I've got my legs just sticking out all over the place. And if I don't like it, I can adjust it. I can change it. Um, it's looking looking fine there. Okay, it depends on how perfect you want to be. Um, and then I'm going to take three more from the other side. I'll try and take them from alternating sides each time, just because obsessive compulsive, to be honest. It um, just doesn't look right. Um, and I'm going to go through the same process again, but I'm going to put them on the other side. And I'm going to, I'm going to try and match the lengths wherever possible. Don't worry if you don't. Nobody cares. The fish don't care unless you're tying for a competition or to pass an award. It's never going to never going to be a problem. So there we go. So we've got our legs just in play. Now you can use this technique. You can use this for tying hoppers. Um, anything that's got legs, to be perfectly honest, um, you can you can add these. in. I'm just having a look at questions again. Uh, Craig, um, I'll cover dubbing a little bit later, if that's OK, when I'm talking about the uh, LK Caddis, because it's got more dubbing in it than this particular pattern. Uh, but I will come to those. Um, so um, so these end bits here don't trim off yet. I'm going to just tie those down along the body just to give me a bit of a taper. Find my scissors. And now I'm going to come in and at 45 degrees, I'm just going to trim those off. And then I've got my nice taper there. And I'm going to bring my thread back to my legs like so and we've got we've got our legs all nicely positioned ready for those fish to go oh that's a daddy long legs i'm going to eat that um i'm going to come back to the same dubbing just a tiny tiny little noodle again Just packing the body with enough features so that it'll be scruffy, it'll be extra sections. There we go. We've got that in place as well. So now we're going to put some wings in. Um, and a um, number of things about this. I'm going to use some um, a cheap. Um, uh, this is a, um, a ginger um, a cock, Indian cock, I think. Yeah, I think so. Um, I don't even know where I got this one, but it's got some really nice um, small feathers down here. Um, and what I also do as well, if I'm using genetic hackles, um, grizzle hackles, things like that, from my uh, whiting or mets um, uh, capes and, and saddles, and I get down to that tiny last section, I never throw those out. I, I keep those, put them in an envelope, and I store them and I keep them so that I can use them for tying in as wings and, and, and other other features as well so it's really quite um quite important to do that um because then you have less waste um particularly at the cost of some of those uh, some of those genetic hackles so i'm looking at i'm looking for a couple of um matching feathers here i don't want them too too wide i don't want them too um too long either um there's two there i quite like those sat next to each other on the on the cake so i'm just going to give those a pull and there they are. Okay, so they just sat sat in here, and then on each one, I'm gonna tr I'm gonna strip off the vast majority of the bottom sections. So when we look at it, they've got quite chunky wings on them. Um, that's a little bit too long for me. A little bit. That's about the size that I want. So. I'm just checking it against the length of the abdomen. Um, I get quite fussy about the wings because they're the first bits that get 
destroyed and they're often you you'll bring your fly in and they've snapped off um, just in the cast so don't worry too much about them if you want to leave them off leave them off um but um it's just nice to have them in your box and everybody looks at them and goes "Ooh, they're nice um and uh so i'm just gonna just gonna place that across the top and just have a look and see whether or not that fits the bill yes it does so i'm gonna hold it and just put a positioning wrap in and then just see where my wing sits and then just adjust it don't worry if it turns and twists okay um, not quite happy with that so we're going to come back in and make another loose positioning wrap just on the top that's a bit better and then I'm going to lock in with three wraps there and it's going to sit just on the top like that now it's going to get pushed down later on so don't worry too much about it um, and then i'm going to repeat that process on the other side so i just need to just double check the length so that i don't have mismatching wings and then i'm going to strip off the fibers from the end like so and then go through the same process on the other side so hold it in place check I've got it where I want it if I'm not happy reposition just hold it up and then I'm just going to put one positioning wrap on I'll put a second one on just for the moment and then I can reposition these now these are this is the time to do all the repositioning there we go and third locking wrap and now we can tighten up we can see that we've got these long bits here and like like we did with the the legs I'm just going to come up and I'm just going to tie those in to make a nice tapered section come in at 45 degrees trim those off get rid of the waist and then come all the way back again so so far it's starting to look like a daddy long legs okay so to recap we put we made a detached body we tied that in a little bit of dubbing um, in front and behind this long section. And then we tied in the legs, small amount of dubbing, tied in the wings. Guess what? Small amount of dubbing comes next. Just a tiny little bit, just so you don't get any unsightly sections that don't look as if um, they don't fit the pattern. So again, tight section, two, three at the most and there we go and there we're in okay right um so um <laughs> let's, let's have a look uh so brian size of hook this is um this is uh my size 12 um I'll just throw it to you brian uh, you should be familiar with these mate size 12 um sprite barbers dry again available on the website um from me along with all the semper fly materials um, plus lots of other cool stuff um and uh who else just arrived then did i see ash smoking behind the bike sheds man if you told me i would have joined you fella um so time for another swig of wine i think okay right now for the key bit okay so this is a um, uh, a genetic um, cape. Um, it's a half cape. It's a dark bar ginger. It's a whiting dark bar ginger. You can probably see at the end. Um, I've mutilated this end here um, because this has got some of my some of the greatest feathers. I use all of these as well for ver for, for larger patterns and various other things. And for some of the bigger ones at the back, um, filler like this. These are going to feature in in some of my saltwater patterns. Um, later on uh, in the year okay so um so i've got these here and i'm looking for a uh, a feather that's going to have barbules on it that are going to be slightly the length well the length or the distance between 
the shank and the hook point maybe a little bit longer that one looks pretty good i do have a a, a hackle gauge here but you can't see that so um, not everybody's got one because they're actually quite difficult to get hold of proper good ones um, so i'm going to take my take my genetic hackle feather um, and as most of you know um, and, and are starting to realize that the better the quality of material better the quality of hackle that you can get hold of the better your flies will a look and the better um, your flies will sit on the water and I can guarantee you they will float for longer. Um, but also um, it does make a significant difference for the for the silhouette and the profile of the fly. If you're look, if you were a fish looking upwards, um, uh, I often find if I if I tie flies with with uh, with cheap um, cock and Indian hackles. Yeah, they do the job for about 10 minutes and then I'm constantly having to put um, put floatant on them. Um, and that that can just be a bit of a pain in the neck um, so there we go now I'm just gonna pull off or we'll just produce a little section here and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut along the stem and form a little comb there you go gonna form a little comb because when I tie when I tie this in, um, it grabs the tying thread and it's not going to come loose if I put too much pressure on it. And then I'm just going to nip this off, just there. And I'm going to take my tying thread down to the position here. Now, I'm going to use this to build up a hackle at the front which uh let me just find my hackle pliers Ooh, they're hiding um got my hackle pliers i'm gonna put my hackle pliers in and you can see that it's pretty sturdy here it's not going to pull out and then i'm going to come around and i'm going to put a number of turns in here so that's one there i'm going to keep them quite close together two three, four, five, just starting to trap them down, let's just push those back, six, so six turns, come back up, and then I'm going to lock that in place, one, two turns, and then this end piece, I'm just going to nip out. Now that's a good example of a piece. Now, you're not. That's not going to be useful for much. But what that is going to be useful for is to make a wing for Daddy Longlegs. Okay, so keep hold of that. Don't lose it. Now you can see that I've got all of this stiff hackle material here, and you can see it all down the bottom here. Now this is the but this is the bit that um, I'm really interested in. Okay, at this point. So this is where this section comes into play. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to wet my finger. It's all COVID compliant. Um, and I'm just going to push down the hackles either side. Like so. I'm not worried about them sticking out the front. I can worry about that later on. And then I'm just going to draw this foam body across and just pull everything back. So we're in this position here. So I'm making a thorax cover across the top. Now this does a number of things. A, it adds extra flotation, I suppose, with the foam. But it pushes down all those hackle points so that they're going to sit in that surface film. And let's face it, there you go, a couple of turns in just to trap it down. And let's face it, you know, dry flies don't float. Because they don't, they can't, they haven't got enough mass to displace um, enough water to float. What they do is is sit in the surface film in the min, in the meniscus, um, and they sit there. Um, and what the floatant does is form a hydrophobic layer, so it just allows them to sit higher up on that layer. 
Um, so um, these spiky barbules here are fantastic because they, they will sit and they will act like little tripod legs and they'll sit in that surface film. Um, the softer they are, the less likely they are to, to be able um, to, uh, to be able to, to sit in that surface film for a long time. Um, and that's particularly important if you're fishing rivers with dry flies um, and you're fishing some quite um, fast riffle areas. Um, so I'm just going to now we're going to coming back to the end here. And you can see that I've got the eye of the hook is under here. I need to keep that fairly clear so that I can put my uh, tippet through it. Um, and now I'm just going to build out one, two, three. Then I'm just going to pull back. And I'm going to build a, a very small head just underneath. But I'm not going to cover the eye of the hook. Now that will pop up this section here. Okay. Now more on that in a second. Um, I just need to figure out what I did with my whip finish tool. Um, normally when I'm tying, I've got a really bad habit. My whip finish tool will be in my mouth. So I always know where it is. But on these sessions, I always put it down. Um, so I'm just going to put in one, two, three turns. And then just make sure it's bedded in. And then, oh, got a bit of wire stuck on there. And then I'm just going to come in, push, nip it off. And we've got what hopefully is looking a bit like a daddy long legs with a nice underbody under there. Got these nice hackles here. You've got a foam thorax over, over cover here. Um, you've got this um, body here that's going to add a little bit more to enable it to, to sit in the water. And I'll show you that in a second. Now, this front section, we're not going to leave it that long. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut it so that it's about three mils long. Like so. And you can leave it like that. But I do like just to put a little V cut in the front. Like so. And it forms this V front here. Now again, some people singe that. I tend not to bother because I'll end up setting fire to it. It's a bit like my curse with super glue. Um, and that is now going to sit perfectly. That That is a fish catcher. Absolutely and utterly. Will I varnish the, the thread here? My, I could do. Um... But I often find that a little bit of varnish just adds that little extra mass. And, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm not going to. If it's well waxed thread, it should bind. But if you're ever unsure, just a little dab of varnish just um, using a needle or when you whip finishing is absolutely perfect. OK, so um, that is the detached body. Um, Daddy long legs, um, quite a seasonal, seasonable pattern, um, but. Down here in the south, exceptionally useful from sort of um, July onwards, um, even through to, to, to now. And obviously the best time is September, um, middle of September into October. Um, but um, to be fair, if the fish are feeding on something big, something fluffy, big sedges, things like that, and you've got a size 12 or a size 14 daddy like this, okay, um, you can clip the wings off and use that. And they'll hit it absolutely utterly. So it's really quite a, a utility fly, really. Um, and uh, it's always worth having a few in the box. And you can up, you can change the colours if you haven't got um, a brown um, barred ginger sort of hackle. You know the again, it's my favourite word at the moment. That utility grizzle um, is fantastic. But you can use whatever you like in it, and you don't need to stick to this colour. Um, and then you can up the ante. You can change it. Um, you stick a blue body in. Um, I've got some blue bodies here ready for next season, although I haven't got many left. Got a blue body there. Um, you can imagine that's going to be um, a blue damsel um, that's going to be flying around. And um, you take fish on those um, quite regularly as well. Um, so I um, hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you've got any questions or you want to say anything, um, just let me know.
Oh, nothing. Okay, right. So, um, if I take it off and I hold it there, you can see it against my, uh, you get more of a perspective against my thumb. Okay, and there she is in all her glory. Remember, his technique trumps pattern. Practice the techniques. Um, okay, um, but, uh, you know, give them a go. See what they look like. <laughs> They're still going to catch fish. They don't need to look perfect. Um, um, you know, and that's one of the key things that I think we all need to take away from this fly tie and lark is that, that we see so many flies that are tied near perfection or look absolutely stunning. But it is those flies that um, that are looking that little bit scruffy, that have got that have got little imperfections that actually cause the most damage um, when we're out fishing. OK, um, thanks, Phil. Uh, thanks, Andy. Um, I'm sure I'm sure that, uh, that over time um, I'm, it will look good. Um, but thank you for your kind words. Really appreciate it. Um, OK, time for a drink, I think. Um, Somebody asked, was it you, Lee, you asked, or somebody asked about dubbing? Let me go back and have a quick little check. Um, yeah, Craig, Craig, um, you mentioned about dubbing. Tips on dubbing. Um, practice, practice, practice. Um, use um, your wax sparingly. Um, don't use really tacky wax. Um, use, um, use, use a, a nice beeswax. Uh, rosin um, a mix um, and also um, just practice putting it on with your fingers um, I tend to use my thumb and my middle finger when I when I when I um, put dubbing on and I find that my, my fingers aren't wet but if I have a problem I just lick them I just get get them a little bit moist and then I just it makes it sit that much easier of course if you've got lots of rabbit and squirrel in the dubbing, rabbit in particular is much easier to dub. Um, it's a much finer um, and, and easier uh, material to dub with. Um, whereas if you're dubbing with um, seal's fur, it's very coarse. It's go, it, it'll fall off. You'll spare, you'll have most of it over your desk. Um, and that's where your wax comes in. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, so, and, and find, find brands that you like to tie with um not everybody's cup of tea is the same as mine i do really like um scruffy dubbing um but um i always i also like um um uh, nature spirit um dubbings you know pine squirrel things like that they're absolutely stunning um vicuna okay another one that came on the market a couple of years ago with david and fay great um great dubbing well worth investing in but i do find for dry flies Vicuna al alpaca um, actually absorbs far more uh, moisture and traps far more moisture than many of the others. Um, so um, it does have a tendency to sink that little bit quicker. OK. Um, OK. Um, now, Malcolm's drinking. Um, Malcolm's drinking uh, um, Southern Comfort. That's great, Malcolm. I do like a Southern Comfort. Um, Hello, Dave. Ah, see, David Lloyd's on here. He's snuck in. Hello, Dave. Um, nice to see you. Um, and, uh, uh, and and Phil, yes, we do. Once we can get out, mate, we need to be on to those mullet. You need, you know, I need to be out there because um, I'm gonna I'm decide I'm gonna become a mullet king. Honest, that's my plan anyway. Right, should we um tie a an LK caddis now? Um, because I love tying these, and as part of your dry fly armory. If people ask, you know, what would you, what fly wouldn't you be without? It'd be my, um, be an LK caddis. Why? Because <laughs> it, it's a ubiquitous fly. It, it's, um, you've got caddis and sedges all over the place, um, at all times of the year. Um, and it can, it can look like something and look like nothing. Um, so, um, so here we go. So, um, same hook again. So it's my size 12 Sprite, barbless dry. Um, I'm going to use the same thread. I'm not going to change my thread up too much. Um, again, I'm going to leave a little space at the front um, and I'm going to make touching turns down the body so that my 
I finish halfway between the hook point and where the barb would be. And then I'm going to take it one, two, three turns back up. Um, and I'm just going to pull that off. And I'm left with, with my key, um, key body materials um, there. Um, now um, I need a... Um, I need a tiny little bit of wire. What to do with my wire? Uh, bear with me, folks. Just behind here. Um, you don't have to use wire at all. You can use um, you can use other materials. And just when I thought I had everything, oh, there it is. It's hiding. Just when I thought I had everything, it all goes missing. So I'm going to use this. Um, I've mentioned this before. I'm going to use this hen's wire. Now, this is a dry fly, but I'm going to put a very fine wire rib on it. I'm going to tell you a bit more about that um, in a moment uh, and the reasons why I do that. Now, this is Hen's um, uh, um, copper wire. It's 0 0.09 mil, so it's very, very, very fine. Um, and that does mean that it does snap very easily. So just be careful when you are applying it um, i'm just gonna nip that off with my wire scissors the other thing to note about it is the finer it gets the more ductile it gets so it will stretch and as you stretch it of course the bonds uh, the metal bonds break um, and you're more likely to get a snap so be gentle um, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to tie this in as part of the underbody here we go. Here we go. Just going to tie this in. And then bring my thread all the way back. And then effectively, I'm going to forget about that for the moment. I'm just going to put it in my clip. It's out of the way. Not going to touch that again. Okay, not for a while. And then I'm going to come in, um, and just for the sake of easiness, I'm going to use my Trout Stalker Scruffy Buzzer dubbing again. So this is going to be a, a, a sort of a brown um, caddis pattern, so to speak. And I'm going to pull out um, a reasonable amount. Now, the other thing I do with these packs as well is I snip off the corner of the pack, and I use that to enable me to tease out dubbing, um, rather than having to go through the top and it all falling out. And then I can just move it up. And it pushes out again and it sort of makes me regulate the amount that I'm using. So less is more, I suppose. Um, and I'm going to apply my dubbing into a dubbing rope and place it up. And I'm going to form my body. Now, I'm not too worried about it all being tight. I actually want it to be reasonably scruffy. I'm going to come back to my dubbing pattern. I'm not one for putting a massive amount on to start. I would much rather add stuff in stages than overpack and then have to take things off. It's, it's far easier to add than it is to take away. Okay. So here we go. Okay, so we've got our main main body in. Okay, that's nice. That's in there. Um, and what I'm also going to do is I'm going to come back to my my ginger, um, whiting ginger, and I'm going to look for my body hackle. Now you can, for an Elkhead caddis, you can do it in two ways. You can either um, hackle the body, which I quite like doing, or you can leave it leave it bare. Um, I'm going to hackle this one just because. Um, so you can see how we palmer a hackle. And this, again, is another technique that you master the technique. All the other patterns that use it all come into line. So as we've done before, I'm just going to take the end piece. Um, I'm going to take my scissors. And I'm going to form, I'm going to cut off the barbules. Like so, and then I'm going to place it underneath. One, two, trap, trap it in. There we go. It's not going to go anywhere. Okay, at that point, if I'd left it completely bare, 
it often will pull out. So I'm not going to do that. Um, and then I'm just going to nip off that section, tie that down, come back up, just cover that. And then I've got my hackle here. Now, if you've got a, a bobbin cradle, you could put a half hitch in, bring it across and uh, get that out of the way. Um, I can't use mine because the camera's in the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a turn at the front and then I'm gradually going to move it down the body. Three, four, I tend to go for five wraps. And then I hold up my hackle. And then I trap down the end with my wire. And then I can let go of it and it's in place. Now you're going to use the wire to trap it all down. I'm just going to wiggle it back and forth. So that it doesn't trap down too many fibres. And I'm going to keep wiggling it. There we go. That's two. Three. Four. And then just bring it up across the top of the front. Trap it down with two locking turns. And then I'm just going to put a kink in it. Across the front. And I'm going to trap that down with a couple of turns at the front. And then that fully traps that in and I'm going to hold my thread and I'm just going to worry that away. And because it's very fine, it won't take long to do that. And I'm going to take my thread all the way back again. And then this section here should just ping off. And we've, we've got, I'm hoping, a the start of a quite a nice little palmered um, uh um, nice little palmered um, body there. Um, and at this point, you've got the makings of a soldier palmer. You've got the makings of, of any palmered um, fly you can think of. And um, the history of fly tying and history of flies, the vast majority of very early flies from the from right from the beginning, um, when feathers were first introduced into the tying, they were all palmered. Hence the Invicta and, and, and all of those wonderful wet flies have got those palmered bodies on them. Um, so um, at this point, it's looking pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in. And now a bit of sacrilege. I'm going to take my scissors, OK, and I'm going to hold them at 45 degrees across the top. And I'm just going to go cut, cut. Remember, those are the bits. Those bits are the top. They're not going to be sitting in the water. It's these bits that are going to form those tripods. OK, um, and now we can start to form um, the wing with the Alcare uh, and other bits. So just bear with me. Um, go to the. Mighty drawers just in the background. There we go. And I'm going to I'm going to put in an underwing on this um, just because I like to. Um, and for this, I'm going to use some um, some CDC. I'm going to use some uh, some Petitjean um, CDC. Uh, good quality. Uh, you pay a lot for it, but it is good quality. You get very, very consistent um, hackles. Um, so I don't want many. because Remember, this is just one part of it. So I'm, I'm going to take I'm going to take two, two hackles. Um, and I'm just going to pair them up end to end, like so. And it's just these, the end tufts that I'm after here. And I'm just going to pinch them. I don't want them, they're not, I don't want them really long. But I just want them to add to the flotation of the fly due to those uh, amazing hydrophobic qualities of, uh, of the preen gland. Um, so I'm just going to trap those down. One, two, three. Just check I'm happy. There we go. You've almost got an F fly here, haven't you? Um, ultimately. Um, the Frasnik fly. And I'm just going to trim those off. And I'm just going to taper up 
this front section. Ooh. If you don't, I've broken it again. That's crazy. I did that last week. Okay, so emergency stations. Let's just trap that down so it doesn't go anywhere. Um, and then let's get my bobbin threader. And there we go. No, it's all trapped. I think I've broken more threads while doing these sessions with you guys than I've, I've broken for years. Um, must be nerves. Um, so I'm just re-threading. My eyesight lets me. I'm really struggling to thread that today. That's it. Let's go extreme. Right, and we're back. So if this happens, just trap it with your hackle pliers and then come back in with your thread. And you haven't lost anything. Okay. So get back into that. There you go. And I'm going to form in my tapered head section there. Right. Okay. I know I don't know my own strength, Phil. Um, so, yeah. So in terms of in terms of this, Phil, you asked if you can use deer hair. Yes, you can. Um, I've got some elk in here. Uh, it's not the elk I want, though. Um, but I was looking for my bleached elk, but never mind. Um, the elk that I've got available at the moment is just some olive, Vineyards olive. Um, I'm going to use this on this one. It's not, not perfect, but I've obviously used the other bit. So, so there it is. All right. So elk hair, um, it's thicker, um, than, than the majority of deer hair. It, um, so therefore, Inside, if you look at under a microscope, it's got these compartments. Um, uh, so the air that's trapped in it, which gives it that spongy feel. And I don't want a massive amount of this. Um, I just want enough to to form that wing silhouette. Um, and what I'm looking for is my hair stacker, which has miraculously, in its hour of need, disappeared off the table. Um, so I'll find that in a second. So I'm going to come in with this. Now with deer hair, you can probably, I don't know if you can see on here, this particular elk hair has got lots of um, fluff down at this end here. Um, that suggests to me that this might be have been shot in the winter. Um, the more fluffy hair that it has at the base, um, um, the uh, it tells us that it was a winter shot animal. Um, so, you, so often the summer, um, you have less of that, but obviously the store, the, the actual hair itself is a lot shorter. Okay, so I want a nice little pinch of this. I, I always want more than I need. Okay, I always want more than I need. And I'm going to take the ends of it here. You can see these fluffy bits. I'm just going to tease those out and get rid of those. Like that. Now... That's reasonable. Could probably do with a bit more there, but I need to. I need to actually um, get those tips so that they're all equal. And that's where the the hair stacker comes in. And for the life of me, it's not here. So let's resort to. The magic draw of substitute hair stackers and things. There we go. 
Um, so I've got my hair stacker. And it's just a couple of tubes to just sit in. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop these into the inner tube. And then I'm going to tap it. So that the tapping motion makes all of those hairs drop and sit all together. So they're all the points are together. And then I'm going to take it. I'm going to open it up. Open it at an angle. Don't open it like this because they all fall out. Open it at an angle. And you'll see all the tips should all be aligned. And then take those with your thumb and your finger. And you'll find that you've got some beautiful elk or deer or whatever it is you're using. If they've got any rogue pieces, just get rid of those. Take your time. If you feel you need a little bit more, cut a little bit more off, put it back in, give it a tap. For the sake of speed tonight, um, I'm just going to I'm going to tie this bit in. So I'm just going to tie this in on the top, and I'm just going to make it a little bit longer than the um, CDC wing that I put underneath. So there it is. I'm just checking it. I'm going to come in. I'm going to hold it, pinch it. Now I find the trick with elk and deer is not to pull down hard on it. So um, I'm just going to pinch wrap and I'm going to make a very loose wrap down not tight and then I'm going to put a second wrap in so I haven't tightened up at all yet it's just holding it all in place so I can position it and then on my third wrap I'm going to start to pull down and what I find that that does is it keeps them all in the right position on top and now you can start to build and put more pressure on to trap them in place, like so. Now we've got all of this bunch at the front here. Now I want to keep a lot of that, or at least a little bit of it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that back like we did previously. And I'm going to build up a little dam of thread just behind it. And a bit of a head like so and there she is in place don't worry if you get some pieces that come around the side you can always nip those off if you need to but to be honest I wouldn't bother okay and I'm just gonna tighten down a little bit more there we go another couple of wraps Positioning, just checking. There she is, sitting there. And then I can come back to the front and finish off my head. Now you could put a little hot spot in there if you wanted to with a different colour thread. Um, you could do whatever you like, to be fair. Um, so um, it's all looking good. Now, whip finish tool. I'm going to come in with my whip finish tool I'm going to pull back the elk hair notice I haven't cut it yet two three four five plenty of space there in we go just tighten it off scalpel push against it and then we've got just got this end bit here to play with now for this bit um, I want a sharp pair of scissors and what I like to do with this is I like to place my scissors at the angle of the eye if I'm using a down eyed hook like so now that's the angle at which I want to cut at so I'm going to try and mirror that but I'm going to do that I'm going to come in and then I'm going to bring my scissors up about two to three mils up and clip and we get that nice brushy front section here okay now you can make it a little bit longer you can make it a little bit shorter and then for this one just for my own sanity um, I'm going to come in with a little bit of varnish on this one just to just to secure that um, 
that Alcare in place and the wraps. So I'm just going to take a needle and I'm just going to bring it in and I'm just going to drop a bit of varnish just in the top, just in there. Um, and then turn it upside down and then a little bit of varnish. Not a lot. And I tend to use Celia for this rather than Sally Hansen because um, Sally Hansen is hot. It doesn't absorb as well into the thread, whereas the Celia is formulated to do so. Where if you think about it, the Sally Hansen is designed to uh, to sit on the top of a substance. Um, so we've got oh, wrong one. We've got our L Care Caddis. Now you can up the ante on it. You can change the color of the Dia or L Care. You can change the color of the um, CDC. You could put a bright pink piece of CDC in there as a cider post, um, which works really well. Find that these particular patterns are really good into fast running riffly water um, on the river. Um, you can you can watch them um, and, they, and in the summer the fish come up and as soon as it hits the water they'll they'll just hit it um, and it's quite an electric thing to watch. Um, what you can also do is either you can leave these as they are, but I know a lot of people who then just trim these off at the bottom. It's up to you. Um, it's completely up to you. It's not a problem. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, so that is ultimately this the stimulator um and um uh there's a a, a retirer sedge that that kieran showed me um last season that um that i just love tying as well that just takes a massive number of fish um, um on both still water and um and on the river um so um I hope you enjoyed those two patterns. Right, let's have a look and see what see what else uh, people have been writing on here. Now, I'm assuming that because everyone's gone quiet, um, that you've just been watching avidly or you've all fallen asleep. I've spent today about five hours doing online lessons for kids um, where they've all been there. And all I've seen is an icon on the screen. And normally I'm being shouted at, but just can't see, um, just cannot see anything. So... Um, it's hard to uh, to judge what's going on here. Um, uh, yeah, the, the dry rat is a great fly as well, Lee, um, as well. Um, but as always, you know, I think we all get a bit carried away. And I, I'm guilty of this about wanting to have lots of patterns. And actually, when I think about my season, I look at my journals, I end up fishing with maybe four or five patterns of dry fly three or four patterns of nymph that are just constantly catching fish and occasionally something else will come into play if it's a particular season. So, um, uh, it's, um, you know, just thin down your boxes basically, unless you're a competition fisherman, thin them down, think about, um, uh, what's working particularly, um, at that particular time of year. Um, so two of my favorites. Okay. Um, you know, um, and give them a try. See what happens. Um, you know, even at this, even at this time of year, a dry fly can take a fish. Okay. Um, yeah, you're right, Rod. I do need a tidy up. I've been, I've been fulfilling orders and things for various people. Um, so I've got lots of stuff laid around all over the place. Um, and, uh, and, and I have to go through that religious tidy up and i tend to do that on a on a sunday morning um so um if you've got any other questions throw them in guys um it'd be quite nice wouldn't it if we had uh if we could have some you know if this was more of a zoomy type thing but then we'd lose the um the zooming in excuse the pun um onto the fly and things like that i feel um but that's something for me to look at at a later stage okay um but thanks for uh thanks for tuning in i hope that the lockdown and the, the conditions at the moment are are bearable. Um, it's stressful for everybody, um, but um, I know a lot of us have taken the uh, decision not to fish at this moment in time, just because it's not the right thing to do for us. Um, but if you've got somewhere you can get to walking to it or something like that, that's absolutely great. 
Um, so um, I hope you have a good rest of the week um, and into next week. And uh, and I'll we'll have a think about what we're going to do next week. Uh, if you've got any suggestions, ping me a message or put it up on the uh, up on the Facebook page. Um, and as always, you know, check out uh, my websites. Uh, we've got the um, uh, the Lost Lake Fly dot co dot uk where, where we've got lots of materials and hooks and, and dubbing and various things um, but we've also got um, our facebook page where i'm putting up videos of individual tying so it's more in depth um, for individual flies and the step by steps as well um, so um, uh, you know um, hopefully there's something there for everybody and if you'd like particular patterns tied please let me know um, this week i've um, i've particularly um, I was asked to to tie for an order um, some of these bad boys. I don't. I very rarely have ever tied these um, to the point where I had to go and buy um, some of this material. Um, but um, you know, some of these squirmy, wormy, squirmulator things. Yeah, um, this stuff. If you've ever tied with it, is ridiculous to tie with. Um, <laughs> and now I know why I don't tie with it very often. Um, but uh, you know, they catch fish. They catch fish, and uh, and you know. These things are uh, uh, are important, aren't they? Right. Okay. Um, so um, thanks, guys. Um, I'll leave you to the rest of your evening. I'm going to go off uh, and uh, and catch up on um, some Netflix and uh, and actually speak to my wife tonight. Um, and uh, um, and um, good luck. Have fun. Don't take the tying too seriously. <laughs>